We've got a special box here today. We've got a box full of DSLR cameras, point and shoot digital cameras, lenses. These are all untested and we're gonna go through and see what's working and what's not. I paid a thousand dollars for this box and our target for this box in terms of overall estimated value is two thousand dollars. Oh wait, wrong tool. Let's try this instead. I see a bunch of standalone cameras and lenses, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the box on the ground and we'll pull out of that and get started. Better not have to use this on some bad cameras. All right, let's jump right into the first camera. First camera, we've got a Nikon Coolpix L840 bridge digital camera. And this is a camera that was released by Nikon seven or eight, maybe up to 10 years ago now. Uh, Time seems to fly. It's got a really nice optical zoom of 38x. And I've sold a lot of this camera, as well as the prior versions of the L810, L820, L830. Uh, the biggest issue that I see is battery corrosion in the battery terminal. And this one actually looks clean, which means that maybe there wasn't AA batteries stored in there for a really long period of time. Alright. A little dusty on the lens glass. And this is kind of a cool camera because it's actually got two uh, optical zoom toggles. We've got one on the side for side zoom, and we've got one on the top right here. So kind of unusual. So during my testing of these cameras, what I'm gonna do is test both of those to make sure they work because occasionally the side zoom doesn't work. No, okay, yeah, it does power on. And hello, it looks good there. Um, what we're going to look at is make sure that there's no issues with the uh, lens performance. So we're going to do a full optical zoom range test and we're going to test the flash. And the flash button is right here. We're just going to pop the flash. And pop. And let's move the lens in and out, see if it works. Works good. Sometimes what you see is a little bit of a bend uh, on the lens housing and that can actually impact the zoom from actually working properly. In this case, it looks good. Flash fires. So this camera does appear to be in decent working condition. Has a little bit of wear from use uh, and that's to be expected for the age of the camera. Uh, but this camera is going to sell in the right around $100 range. Uh, if you pair it with a memory card and a bag and a cable, you might get a little bit more than that. But I'm gonna go ahead and call this $100. And again, I paid just over $1,000 for this lot. So whenever I talk about the value of this, I'm talking about the US market value and a completed sale. In the last uh, seven years, I've sold 22,000 digital cameras, camcorders, lenses, SLR film cameras, uh, a lot and a variety of camera accessories. So I've had the spreadsheet that goes back for that period of time and actually longer that shows sales history so I can kind of see trends of pricing going up and down just like the stock market. Um, so we've got a winner here. It's gonna get us a little bit closer to that $2,000 target that I've got on this lot. Okay, next up, uh-oh. We've got a Canon PowerShot SD790, which is actually a pretty popular metal bodied uh, point and shoot digital camera that Canon made 12, 14 years ago, it's 10 megapixels. But the first thing you'll notice is we're missing the side panel here. And that is very common. 30 to 40% of the time, whenever I get this Canon PowerShot SD770 or SD790 in, it's missing that side panel or it's broken. So uh, that normally doesn't affect the actual performance of the camera. It is an eyesore, uh, but we will go ahead and test this. Turn it on, power's on. And let's go through and see if it actually takes a picture. Okay, we've got artifacts on the LCD and I've got three blackish blue spots, which you'll see right here. So uh, normally that's just the display. It doesn't actually affect the picture quality, but what I've tried to do during all of my testing is put a memory card in and, and take the actual outputted picture, put it on the computer and see if it actually does affect the picture quality. Flash does fire and the lens glass itself looks good. So we've got the missing side panel and we've got uh, an issue with the LCD display, but, the, but it does actually take pictures. 
Now, the value of this is going to be pretty nominal um, given its condition related issues. So I would probably go ahead and list this camera in the $30 range. If this was in great working condition with all the original included accessories, this camera has gone up in value quite a bit over the last few years. You're looking in a $125 to $150 range on the Canon PowerShot SD790. So condition plays a huge part in the value of these cameras. Okay, moving on to camera number three. All right, camera number three, we've got a D3000 DSLR camera. I believe this is a 10 megapixel DSLR camera. And it looks like it comes with a kit lens, which is the 18 to 55. And that's just a standard uh, vibration reduction lens that takes okay pictures, but you compare it with a lot of other better, both Nikon and other branded lenses that will result in better optical performance. The LCD also has a fairly deep scratch right here. And if this camera is working, that will also affect the value. So let's go ahead and put a battery in and see if this camera works. This is using the Nikon EN EL9 battery. And it does power on. And let's see if uh, everything's working. It's a bummer about the scratch, but those things happen. I am really, really excited because we have a couple, hopefully, home runs in here. We haven't hit them yet uh, in terms of DSLR cameras that, if they're working, will get us really far along to that target of $2,000. So those are coming up. We just got this, this baby D3000. And this is a lens, uh, this is a body that uh, it takes pretty good pictures. Um, it does not have a built-in motor in the body, so a lot of the more vintage D lenses uh, will be manual focus only on this D3000 body. Flash fires and autofocus does appear to be working. And the cool thing about a lot of the older Nikon, uh, especially, and Sony DSLR cameras is it's pretty easy to get the shutter count. And the shutter count, if you're not familiar, is how many pictures this camera has actually taken. And that affects the value in a big way. So what I'm going to do is take the SD card from the camera, run over to my computer, and see what the shutter count is of this camera real quick. Okay, so shutter count of this camera is 5,391, which sounds like a lot, but uh, I would say the average of the D3000 that I sell is in the 20 to 30,000 range. And I believe this is rated around 75 to 100,000 shutter actuations. So there should be still quite a bit of life left in this camera. And the value for this with the LCD scratch is going to be in the $125 range. And I know I just saw that we've got a couple other Nikon lenses that presumably whoever originally owned this camera also used. So I'll pull those out and we'll do the testing with this body as well. Okay, and uh, you just push the little button, the ejector button here on the camera, and you can take off the lens. If you're not familiar with DSLR cameras, that's how that works. So we've got two, and they're right next to this camera. We've got, ooh, a Nikon 55 to 300 telephoto, and we've got a Nikon 18 to 105 millimeter. So let's start with the Nikon 55 to 300. We'll do this one here in just a second. So what I'm gonna look for optically is no lens glass scratches. And this one actually looks quite good. And we're gonna see if there's any haze or mold visible inside of the lens. And you can do that with a bright light, uh, either indoors or outdoors, just make sure you got a good light. And you can take off the rear cap and also look through the rear glass element. And that looks great. So this lens optically, we haven't tested it yet, uh, looks very good and physical condition wise 
uh, also very good, almost excellent. So high hopes for this actually working. And set it to autofocus, and we're going to test with the VR on, which is vibration reduction. And here we go. So we're looking for the lens to move in and out and focus properly. And it does take a picture. And let's see if autofocus is working. Yeah. Great. So this, uh, this 55 to 300 uh, covers a pretty good optical range and is a, a pretty big step up in terms of performance from your generic Tamron or Sigma lenses. Uh, I really like the 55 to 300. And the value of this in the used market in very good condition is going to be about 150 bucks on this lens. That's excellent. Okay, next up we've got the Nikon 18 to 105. This is a great walk around lens, also uh, vibration reduction. So it doesn't have quite the optical range of that 55 to 300, but if you're looking for a lens where you can get really pretty close uh, with the D3000 body, as well as cover up to the 105 millimeter range, which is actually gonna be even more on this APS-C size sensor, uh, it's, it's a decent lens. Certainly, an, again, an improvement over that 18 to 55. Uh, this one, cosmetically, not quite as good as the 55 to 300, but still really quite good. Uh, lens glass looks good. What I'm looking for on this lens is, especially with a lot of use, the Nikon 18 to 105 and 18 to 135 lenses tend to have some sort of lens creep. So when you angle the lens downward, it will automatically extend. So what I do is just do a quick test. I'm going to move it in and out a little bit and very, very gently just move the lens, move the body and see if the lens will fall out, AKA lens creep. This one's not, so that looks good. Um, normally that doesn't affect the actual performance of the lens, but it will affect the value. So it is something that I do like to test. So let's go ahead and try autofocus and make sure the lens itself is actually working. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this lens is also working well. Uh, we've got the original lens hood, which adds a little bit of value. And we've got all of the lens caps. So we've got a working Nikon 18 to 105 millimeter lens. And I would probably list this in the 90 to $100 range, given it's really quite good condition. We'll call it 100. Nice. That's a great Nikon, Nikon kit. Normally when you're, uh, when I'm doing Nikon D3000s, D3100s, even D5000s, the lenses that it comes with are the 18 to 55 and the 55 to 200. Uh, rarely do we get anything uh, quite like that. So that's, that's, a, that's a good one. Okay, thanks to that D3000 3 lens kit, we are up to a little over $500 in projected value from that original $1,000 buy. Uh, so let's see if we can keep that momentum going. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to help our momentum and getting to our target, but it sure is a cute little camera. Is that a bunny? Little flexible ears there. So this is basically a kid's camera. These are marketed on Amazon and eBay. Pretty inexpensive. A lot of the times they use a micro USB for charging and a micro SD card for memory. But uh, let's see if this thing powers on. Got a plastic lens it looks like. That does, okay. And let's see if it takes a picture. And how good of a picture does it take? Oh boy, that looks pretty terrible. Oh, you can do uh Oh, you can put a little squirrel in there. And a dog? And monkeys? What do we want to do? Some balloons? Oh wow. How about that little monkey guy there? Got a little monkey there. Uh, looks like you can do all sorts of weird stuff with this camera. Uh, picture quality is really terrible, uh, especially indoors. This is a camera that would need a lot of natural light to even take a reasonable picture, but the picture quality is going to be far worse than any cell phone picture. So this is not a camera I would recommend, although it is quite cute. So I'll put that in uh, maybe a donation pile, but this isn't a camera that has really any sort of value. All right, next up, we've got Panasonic. What is this? Panasonic DMC ZS40. And I've sold a lot of Panasonic cameras throughout the years. 
If you've seen any of my prior videos, Panasonic isn't a brand that I really focus on anymore because I've run into a lot of issues with sensor dust uh, causing black spots in pictures taken. Hopefully this isn't one that will exhibit that problem. We've got a four gig memory card, no battery. I do have a bunch of Panasonic batteries here. I believe this is the BCM13. I really like this camera actually, if it is working. It's got a cool control ring feature that will allow you to adjust white balance, ISO, uh, and a few other functions. So let's power it on, see if it works. It does power on. Um, okay, glass looks good. We have some dust visible inside. And there's a difference between dust inside of the lens and dust in the sensor. I would much rather have dust inside of the lens than dust in the sensor because oftentimes the dust inside of the lens, just like with any of the DSLR camera lenses that I have, a lot of them have dust, doesn't actually affect the picture quality. So let's, uh, let's do a little bit of testing with the ZS40 and see what it does. Okay, the lens moves in and out. This has a pretty good 30X optical zoom, which for this form factor uh, is really excellent. Look at that, okay. So let's check for artifacts. AKA black spots as we're zooming in and out. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. And let's try taking a picture and see if the flash fires. I'm gonna move it to intelligent auto real quick. Yup. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. So this guy is working and uh, it's got a Leica lens too. Uh, Panasonic partner with Leica on most of Panasonic's point-and-shoot cameras. It's really nice. This camera in good working condition, which it appears to be, apart from a little bit of dust internally, you're looking at a value of about $150. So another win, another working camera. We have some cool stuff in here, guys. Real cool. Real cool coming up. Sony A200 DSLR camera. And this camera was released, I want to say, in the 2010-ish time frame. 10 megapixels, I believe. I've sold a lot of Sony A200s over the years. And this uses Sony's alpha mount, so any A mount lens between Sony and Minolta and aftermarket brands will work on this. Um, you just align the orange dots, make sure we're in autofocus, and put in a battery. This uses the Sony NPFM 500 battery. And uh, let's power it on, see if it works. Yep. Okay, power's on. And this camera uses uh, compact flash memory. So let's see if we've got one. Yeah, there is one in here. 256 megabyte compact flash. And that 256 card, once we format it, looks like it holds about 93 pictures. So not a very big compact flash card, but you can get a couple dozen picks off of it. Uh, we're in auto, and uh, let's try taking a picture. This is an interesting feature about Sony Alphas. Uh, it does kind of a lagging, a triple lag flash. So whenever you push the button and hold down, you'll hear it flicker about two or three times, and then the flash itself will actually fire. So there is a little bit more of a delay, uh, from shutter button to actual picture taken when the flash is engaged on a Sony of this era compared to Nikon and Canon, from my experience anyway. Uh, just one of the small things that I've noticed over the years. And this looks pretty good. Okay, so there is some dust on the focus screen. So whenever I'm looking through the viewfinder, and you, you can take the lens off for this too, and you're looking at a whitish background, uh, I'm seeing dust on the focus screen. So the focus screen is up here inside of the camera, it's right up there. And what can happen is dust can get on either side of the focus screen. And when you're looking through the viewfinder, uh, it will be visible, but doesn't actually affect the pictures taken. There is a little bit of wear on the camera from use. And you can even hear it trying to hunt as we're moving it around. So this camera is in pretty good working condition, it appears. Uh, if you pair this with a charger and uh, the memory card that it comes with, you're looking at a value of the Sony A200 in the $125 range. And if you pair it with other lenses, then that will uh, increase the value as well. This is the 18 to 70 millimeter kit lens. 
and that puts us at $780. So we're not even to the original buy price yet, uh, but hopefully with some of the stuff we've got left, we're gonna, we're gonna get there. All right, next up, this is what we've all been waiting for. At least I have anyway. This is a Canon EOS 5D Mark II. This is a full frame camera that was released by Canon in 2008. And it actually has a pretty nice lens on there too. I think this may have been sold as a kit at some point. Uh, it comes with a Canon 50 millimeter 1.4 lens, AKA the bokeh machine. Uh, this creates some really wonderful portrait uh, photography and paired with the full frame sensor on the 5D Mark II, it is actually a true 50 millimeter. So that is a cool lens. I sell this lens a lot. Uh, for standard photography, it's a big jump from the Canon 50mm 1.8. Um, for video, eh, tends to hunt around a little bit, depending on the body that you're using. Uh, it's not one of my favorites for video, but for just regular still photography, mm, it's a great lens. So let's uh, put a battery in. It uses the Canon LPE6, and this camera actually uses compact flash cards for memory. Let's see if we've got one in there. Yeah, there is one in there. Got a one gig in there. So uh, the first thing that I'm gonna check is the compact flash tray. And one of the issues that you'll see with anything that uses compact flash is there's so many individual small pins in there that if someone puts the card in backwards and really forces it or doesn't line it up correctly, it can actually bend those pins and render the camera basically non-usable because it won't be able to read or write to the compact flash memory card. So, um, Let's uh, double check and see if it looks good. I thought it looked good when I was looking at it. Yeah, it looks fine. Camera power is gonna be right here. Whoop. Top LCD power is on. And let's take a look. And we've got that powered on as well. Excellent. So let's go ahead and test this camera, see if it works, and see if uh, the memory card is working properly. Error CF, okay, flashes error CF both on the rear as well as the top. So let's take out the compact flash card. It says card not formatted. And let's put in a different one. I've got a 32 gig compact flash card here. Let me go ahead and throw in and see if it does anything different. Power's on. And let's try formatting this. Format. So we're gonna hit format and then we'll hit okay. What's that? Cannot format change card? Okay, that's not good. So we've tried two different cards. It's saying cannot format change card on both. I'm gonna try a third card. But all these two cards I just use in a Canon Rebel XT which also takes compact flash cards, and they both worked fine. So third compact flash card. Again, I'm not seeing any bent pins. One of the best things in the lot is gonna have problems. So it's the hazard of buying on tested lots. You don't really know exactly what you're gonna get. So whenever, again, whenever I'm looking and buying lots like this, I don't necessarily factor in that the cameras are working because a broken camera like this still has value. Same issue, cannot format change card. So we've had three of the same results using three compact flash cards that I know work, and we're having compact flash memory card problems. I'm gonna go ahead and take the compact flash card out entirely, and we're gonna do a little bit of testing with the camera without the card just to see if the camera's functioning otherwise, and it's just the compact flash card problem. So we'll turn it back on, and do a little testing. That looks good. Yep. Okay. Autofocus is working well. So we're testing the lens too. Autofocus looks good. I'm gonna flip it over into manual. And just make sure everything feels smooth. Sometimes, especially uh, if it hasn't been used in years and years and years, sometimes the reason the autofocus doesn't work is it's kind of just a little bit locked into position. So if you move it to manual and then move uh, the focus ring around a little bit, Sometimes that can get it to working, but it is working. And let's see how it looks optically. Good, a little bit of dust inside the lens. And I'll get the front glass cleaned off, of 
course. But the lens itself is working good, and I would say is in good condition with the little dust spec. Um, value of the lens is going to be more than the camera. Uh, this lens, the Canon 50mm 1.4, in its current condition, I have this for around 150. The body is working, but the compact flash is not recording uh, or reading, all, despite all of the pins appearing to be in good shape. So knowing all of that, I would list this in parts condition on eBay and someone smarter and better at me than fixing electronics may be able to fix it. Uh, I would list this uh, in the $135 range uh, in its current condition, maybe a little bit more, maybe up to 150, given that it actually does take pictures. So I take it back, they're about the same price, 150, 150 on these. We just crossed over the $1,000 mark right into that $1,080 range, which barely covers my expenses and doesn't even once you factor in all of the shipping fees, the box cost tape, eBay fees, all of those additional expenses. I'm still not into the green. And we've got some cameras left that will hopefully get us there. Okay, next up, we've got a Canon PowerShot SD1400 in orange. Very unusual color. I would say pink and orange are the most unusual colors of the SD1400. Also in black and silver and blue, I think. Um, uses the Canon NB4L battery. I've sold a lot of this camera over the years. And this copy appears to be in really quite nice shape, apart from the rubber bumper latch missing right here. So there should be a little piece of black rubber right here. But apart from that, it looks really quite nice. LCD looks great. Uh, for its age, this is a 10, 12 year old camera. Uh, I think it's 12, 14 megapixels. Powers on. Very slim camera, as you can see. Not a super optical zoom, but serviceable. If you're out in the go, this is a very easy camera to slip in a purse or something. Of course, most people now are using their cell phones. Um, but if you're looking for a nostalgic camera to use that takes decent pictures, SD1400 really is a pretty good pick. So flash fires, uh, lens looks good. I'll get it cleaned up a little bit. Uh, it's a bummer. If we didn't have that uh, rubber bumper latch missing, I would say this is in very good condition. Um, as is, I would still say it's in good shape, and that bumper latch won't affect the value that much. Um, in great shape, this sells for a little over $200. I would probably list this uh, on my eBay store for around $125. Um, and it's a really, really pretty clean camera. Oh, only one in the box. SE11 actually isn't one I've seen a ton of. 14 megapixel, 20x zoom. The box, if you have it, does add a little bit of value. So I do try to keep the boxes if I get them. Um, ooh, it's in a red color too. Looks quite nice. And this uses the Olympus Li50B battery. Hopefully one of these may be charged. Probably a long shot. Oh, it's already got one in there too. How many batteries does this come with? We've got a cable and we've got instructions and a disc. Oh, it does power on. Wow, glass looks great. I don't think this camera was used very often. So this has a 20x optical zoom and really looks to be in uh, very good shape. Lens pretty quiet. Uh, let's go ahead and try taking a picture. Move it into auto. Very common lens noise focus when we're at the point of autofocus right before you take a picture and you've clicked that halfway down on the shutter button. Um, as it's grabbing onto the image, there is gonna be a little bit of noise. Okay, that looks good. So this camera is in, I would say, great working condition. I'll get it cleaned up a little bit, but there's not much to clean up. Uh, and I would list this camera actually in the $65 range. If I didn't come with all the original accessories here, uh, this would be more like a $45, $50 camera. So it does add some value like I was talking about. Nice. Okay. Got a small camera here. Sony DSC W220. Cybershot camera. Uh, 12 megapixels. Boy, we've got a lot of 10 to 14 year old cameras that we're looking at today. That's for sure. Looks to be in pretty clean shape, really. And I sell this model a lot along with the Sony DSC W230. Very common Sony Cybershot. Lens moves out, looks good. Noisy, you hear that noise? 
So that's something that I would call out in the, uh-oh. So we're in auto and it just flipped to program auto and it flipped to scene mode without me actually touching anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch it just so you see. So right as I was looking through it, it was rotating between the modes. So that's not a common problem. It is a common problem for certain brands like Samsung, but uh, it's not a common problem that I see a lot in Sony is it could be related to, well, it is related to this, the dial here. And there's something going on inside where uh, maybe it's getting stuck and or not figuring out which mode it's in. So it's rotating between all of the modes. And that really affects your picture taking capability as well as being very annoying. A very little bit of alcohol will actually dry out everything in there and can uh, get it back into working condition. Um, so I will try that, but for, no, for now, no value on this camera. If it was in good working condition, I would list this for around 75 bucks. We've got five cameras left. We're at $1,265 in projected value. So once you factor in all those expenses I talked about before, we're at about a break-even point. So anything we get above what we have now is just gonna be a profit. But if only one out of these five next guys work, that's not very much profit for all of the work that I put into testing these, originally sourcing them. Uh, believe me, that's not, that's not the kind of, kind of profit you want, especially if for whatever reason, any of these cameras that I sell gets returned to me, that's just additional expenses, right? Shipping costs going both ways. If they return it in a condition that's broken or different than I originally sent, then I've just lost a lot of value. So all of that goes into um, where I like to end up spending the money that I buy these lots for. And it's something that I always take into consideration. Okay, all right, Nikon Coolpix S4100 in Plum. And this is a, a pretty popular uh, point and shoot little camera with a 5X optical zoom. Again, in that 10, 12 year ago range. Uh, it uses the Nikon Eon 19 battery. Which I've got here. You know what's really funny? I kind of have to share this story even though it's not camera related is my wife made a smoothie, very generous of her, uh, a few days ago in the morning for, for me and the kids. And she put peanut butter in there, a little bit of chocolate. And I thought, wow, this is particularly creamy today. Uh, a little bit different uh, than normal. And uh, I go in the kitchen and she's kind of laughing because she said the kids thought it was way too thick way too creamy and it turns out she'd actually snuck some tofu into the smoothie um, which was uh, a little rascally move on her part um, she said if we had thought it was great she wouldn't have told us okay camera powers on uh, and lens looks good got a little bit of wear let's see a little bit noisy Let's try taking a picture. Flash fires, autofocus working. A uh, little bit of wear on the buttons as well as the LCD. But if you pair this with a memory card and a charger, you're looking at a value in the $75 range on the S4100. And this is a camera that four or five years ago I would have sold for 40 to 45. So values on cameras uh, do fluctuate. And especially as they're not making uh, budget point and shoot digital cameras anymore for people that have lost the same exact model or they wanna try something that is a little more discreet than having a big old DSLR. These still serve a function. Uh, they're pretty limited in their video capability, um, but they are fun to shoot with. So I, I, get, I get their appeal for sure. Another little point and shoot, and we've got a Canon PowerShot SD4000. I do not get this model in very often. This is the most rectangular camera that Canon ever made to my knowledge. Okay, look at that compared to say Sony, right? So uh, pretty, pretty big difference. It's just, uh, it just reminds me of a, of a rectangle. Uh, this uses the Canon NV6L battery and physically we've got a fair amount of wear on this camera. Around the corners uh, to the LCD, a little bit of metal wear here. Got wear on the bottom. Oh, got a memory guard in there already. Okay. Put it in and turn it on.
Ooh, power's on. Lens looks good. A little bit of dust, but I don't see any scratches or anything. Display also looks good. Well, that's refreshing. Okay, lens is moving in and out fine. A little bit of wear on the lens barrel there, on the very outer part. Let's try taking a picture. Yeah, flash fires. Wow. Cool. Uh, yeah, this isn't a camera I've sold a lot of. I've sold some of the SD3500s, as well as, I say, a lot of other Canon PowerShot models. But uh, this camera, in really, really nice working condition, I've seen sell for 175 to 200 uh, In this condition, um, which I would say is fair, but working, uh, if you pair it with a memory card and a charger and a USB cable, I would expect to get in the $100 range, maybe a little bit less for it, but I'll call it 100 on the SD4000. Okay, third, third to last camera, and we've got all DSLR cameras left, so save some of the best for last. This, I don't know why I would say is the best, although it is a pretty new Canon DSLR camera. It's the Canon US 4000D, which is the T100 in the United States. So this is probably a European model. And it uses the Canon LPE 10 battery. This is a super basic, bare bones DSLR camera. It doesn't have an auto flash, it's a manual pop flash. And in a throwback to Canon SLR film cameras, we have the on off switch actually on the mode dial, as opposed to a separate button over here. So it just makes the whole thing seem a little cheap, if I'm honest, but it also was a, the most budget DSLR camera that Canon has recently released in 2018. So, I guess you get what you pay for. Uh, let's turn it on. Oh, it does power on. There we go. And let's go through and see if we can get a picture taken. Set to um, raw. Okay. Pop the flash. Got to make sure we pop that manual flash. Okay. Uses a fairly unusual lens too, which is the Canon 18 to 55 EFS 3 lens. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, Canon DSLR cameras that actually use that third uh, version. Unfortunately, a lot of the times the autofocus on this lens doesn't work. In this case, it does, and that's a godsend because uh, this camera, in good working condition like it is, let's just double check. Optically looks good. Looks good. You'll also notice it has a plastic lens mount as opposed to aluminum or a metal lens mount. Just uh, to save a few extra bucks, I guess. So the whole thing feels a little cheap. Um, but the value on this camera in its current working condition, uh, actually, this is probably on the closer to very good than good side. I would put it in the 175 to 200 range. If I paired it with accessories, probably closer to 200. So we'll call this $200 for this 18 megapixel DSLR camera. With that Canon DSLR camera, we're at 1,640 in projected value. And we've got two left, so these better be two pretty good ones. We've got another Nikon DSLR camera, Nikon D5000. I wonder if the lenses that were in this box may have actually gone with this, because that makes a little more sense than the D3000. Uh, also doesn't have the kit VR lens. I believe the kit lens when this was originally sold was the VR, vibration reduction, and this is just the standard 18 to 55 DX lens. Interesting. Uh, uses an Nikon ENL9 battery. And this uh, actually incorporates live view. And it was one of Nikon's first budget DSLR cameras to have live view. Uh, does add some delay to the shooting, but it is a feature that some people use quite a bit. So let's go ahead and try taking a picture. It does power on. Got to show you. Yep, flash fires. Okay, so what we can do with this camera, uh, it looks good. I mean, physically, I'm not seeing any issues with it. Lens glass looks good. Uh, grip looks good. I'm going to take the memory card out. We'll look at that last picture I took and get a shutter count. Read. All right. I've got the shutter count on this and it's 5,121. And the shutter life on this is similar to the D3000 as far as I'm aware, in that 75 to 100K range. 
So should be quite a bit of life left in this old D5000. And the values of this have actually gone up a little bit over the last few years. Some DSLR prices have gone down, some have gone up a little bit. Nothing super drastic because the medium is fortunately kind of dying out. As we're heading into new technology like Micro Four Thirds and Canon's RF line and other brands like Nikon Z line, uh, we're looking at values probably not rising a bunch on a lot of the entry level cameras. But for some models, they've remained steady over the last few years. This one's actually gone up. Uh, I would list this camera uh, in its fairly low shutter count with some accessories uh, in the $160, $165 range for the D5000. Next up, we've got a Canon Rebel T5. Man, this is probably Canon's best-selling DSLR camera ever. Uh, they sold millions of these in every market. Uh, Condition-wise, looks quite good. It's got the Canon 18 to 55 regular IS lens on it, and it uses the Canon LPE 10 battery, and it does power on. This is our last camera, so we need this camera to be $195 in value to get to the $2,000 target. We'll see if everything's working. We will just have to see about that. You hear that noise? So we're having some issues with autofocus on this lens. So remember how I talked about 18 to 55s having issues with autofocus? It's real. Okay, and I just did the thing where I talked about before where I flipped it into manual and I'm just moving it and it was a little bit stuck. So I'm hopeful that with that change, that slight tweak, we'll have autofocus working in this lens again. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, that did work. So we went from uh, that kind of, it was just getting stuck. It was trying to autofocus and it hadn't been used in so long. It was just kind of getting stuck. So let's try this a few more times. Yeah, that looks actually, actually pretty snappy. Nice. Wow, okay. Well, yeah, this is working actually quite well. So I'll do some additional testing just to ensure, but I believe that was just that minor issue on that lens that's now fixed. Um, let's see how everything is looking. A little bit of dust visible through the viewfinder on the focus screen. And that looks good. So in good working condition, oh, bummer, if we had one more lens, it would be over 200. We're not quite going to get there. Um, in good working condition, I sell the Rebel T5 in the $170, $175 range. If you pair it with a charger and a USB cable and a memory card, you're looking at about that. So we fell just short, literally 20, 30 bucks short of our $2,000 target, but I'll still make a few hundred bucks on this lot keep me making videos like this. I'd love to make these videos. I really appreciate your support as always. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.